the Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy, and as you can tell, there's no RJ. He is off at a roping today. He's at a calf roping. So, it's just me, probably boring, but I do have a lot of stuff to show you. The only problem is that I can't bring it, like, right here. So, I've prepared a few clips, and I'll talk about them before we go. Um, in the barn stalls, uh, Miss Longhorn has had, she just didn't look good, dejected like she didn't feel good. Um, not real sure what was going on with her, called the vet. He said to evaluate her feed and her water. Um, in the winter we normally only hay. We supplement with feed, so she wasn't on any feed. Um, but we separated her off and put her on feed like the little kids. And she seemed to pick up a little bit. But what we noticed is, and we weren't really conscious of it because we normally don't have a problem, but it stayed super cold here for like a week, which is unheard of. Normally, the nights are super cold, but the days get up to like 40 degrees, 30 degrees, you know, things thaw out during the day and then just freeze at night. So you'll just have like a little bit. Well, this year, we had almost 10 days of below freezing temperatures that's not normal for oklahoma um but it it is what it is so we noticed that as the tanks only had that little bobber to stay open to drink and some of them actually froze over that so we had to put two electric heaters in to keep two of them from one's an old metal bathtub so the whole thing gets really cold all the time and uh, it always freezes and then um the other one is a big stock tank and it didn't freeze all the way but it froze solid about this much down the whole thing across so um yeah our bottles froze because they're just made to be a bobber um anyway we noticed that she was having trouble getting water with her horns we fixed the fence where there used to be a hole and we didn't realize that she utilized that hole to put her horns in and drink. So um, we think she had a little bit of a dehydration problem. Um, she was getting water when we first would go out and water, but then she wasn't getting it any other time. So um, yeah, we, we fixed that. We put her off by herself, um, put her in a stall with the one electric heater that we have running and the other and some feed so she could every morning every night fill up get great the doctor said that or the vet said that um, she might need to be warm too she said that it gets harder on them in the winter if they're carrying a parasite load especially in this weather because parasites are fighting to stay alive so sorry it's my coffee um so we warmed her she's doing much better um just have to separate her off make sure she's getting good drinks good water and she's doing much better um let's see anything else everything is still pulled off of the pasture and that's part of our problem is they don't have the pond to go down and get a drink from and that is because the pond is frozen we had um kevin our horse trainer he's a friend of ours and he had a horse get out on a pond and everything turned out okay but he figured out real quick and we told him that's why we pull um, our stuff and this is his first hard winter over there in the new place so he is experiencing a lot of things that um, he's not used to compared to the other place um, he moved in last year in December and we didn't have a hard winter so he's learning um, and it just is the things have come in with um, with changing places so poor guy he's he's had it rough but that is why we pull everything off of the pasture his turned out just fine we did have one that one year there was two of them that got out there and they were small calves and they one did end up passing away so we know the hardship of it and we just don't we have the means to put them up so we do there you go um so they're still off the pasture because it still hasn't gotten warm enough during the day to thaw out enough of the pond so it's kind of just frozen and then refreezing and then thawing a little bit and glazing over and then refreezing and it's because of that 10 day stint where we had new weather above freezing so um yeah 
it's been interesting. Uh, the two calves in the barn do wonderful. I am thinking that we might purchase a hanging light. If anybody um, wants to do that, you know, hey, we're open to that. <laughs> um, we found them pretty reasonable, um, but we want it to hang so they'll just take the chill off. We don't want them to uh, be, and the heat lamps do it in there, but not for the calves because you can't put them, it's hard to explain. The walls of the stall are about five foot tall. To lower the light to that five foot, they can get their noses up to it um, if we go too low. And if we take it too high, then it's outside the walls of the stall and it doesn't just heat that stall, it tries to heat the whole barn. So it's a, we have to find the perfect spot. And so far we've been unable to do that. So the heat lamps aren't really taking the chill off out there and there's nothing that we feel safe leaving running. I want an electric one that I can just plug in up the top and not have any hay around it, not have any thing. We've got, I think, 12 foot walls out there. So yeah, we have a spot where it'll do nicely, but now I've just got to find one that's affordable, reasonable. Oh my gosh. Um, I was looking at patio hanging heaters, so that might be something that we look into getting. So, um, mending fences. There really hasn't been any issues. Um, it's been good. Um, RJ did build, <laughs> he didn't build, he motorized the tumbler with a bicycle, a stationary bicycle. Um, at, we've had some videos and some things. If I can find that video, I'll pop it in right here. This is how we're going to be tumbling fleece, huh? Oh, yeah. Take me in there take him a nap with one leg moving uh-huh okay so if you saw the video number one it, it's interesting <laughs> and if you didn't see the video that means I couldn't find it sorry but uh, yeah it he motorized it with a bike so that he could tumble a little bit better and I actually like it because I'm thinking I could read me a book while riding a stationary bike and tumble in my place I'd get more done or I could crochet yes so, um, anyway, I am doing that. Uh, the other things that I have are all getting ready for the fiber festival. So in the fields, there's nothing going on in the garden. There's, um, in the yarn farm, it's all getting ready for this festival. That's in the farmhouse, on the porch, everything is geared towards getting ready for the fiber festival. So first, I will show you, let's see, I have some yarn in drying and I'll show you that it's only part of it but you get the drift so here's the yarn okay, I got so here we are in the bathroom this lighting is not the best so we've got three reds one is a Cotswold that has more drape than the other two that is just wool um, this is a pink it's a real pale pink it's pretty this is one that I did that I absolutely love and if it doesn't sell this is how I end up with them if it doesn't sell, I think I'm gonna keep it myself. Um, pretty much, it starts out golden and it fades all the way up to a yellow. It's really pretty. And this almost has a peachy hue to it right in here. It's beautiful. Um, then I've got some greens. Some are Cotswold, some are uh, wool. And I've got a blue, which is dark on one end and it fades up the light on the other. You can't see that in there, but it does fade up the light and gets darker. Um, anyway, so I also dyed these. Some of them are dry. Um, some of the thicker ones aren't, but a lot of the thin ones, Cotswold is dry. This little guy is dry. These not so much. So I think what I'm going to do is the reason I use the bathroom is I have this little gas heater here. And I might turn it up to get some really good heat going in here. So I dyed those this week. I also spun those this week in the last couple of weeks. Let's put it that way. Okay, so I also dyed some fleece and I will make that into bats. And um, I guess I'll just go ahead and show you that right now. I don't have it made into bats yet. It's sitting, the fleece is sitting over here because it's still damp. So I'll show you 
the fleece that I dyed. Okay, so the other thing I worked on this week is getting some fiber dyed up to make some bath. I have some purples. I have a little bit of pink, pinky white. I just wanted it for uh, texture um, or color texture, I guess. Some red. Then I did some blue. And I washed some white up while I was at it so that that way I can make this will turn into bats for the fiber festival. So. Okay, the other thing that I'm doing, I mean, I spent, I hand spun all the yarn and dyed it, all that stuff, but we had a couple of ladies come up to us at the fiber festival last year and inquire about um, yarn spun in the grease. And my goal was to be able to take them a couple of skeins and hopefully they'll purchase it. If not, somebody else will, I'm sure. Um, but I have spun one. I have my fleece actually in the middle of the table. I have spun 350 yards. I have it over in the pot washing, or I would show you. And I am making a video about how I wash after I spin it. It's nothing miraculous or anything, but I couldn't find any on YouTube. So, washing yarn after it's spun in the grease. Um, look for that video. Um, the final thing that I have been working on is cleaning things out and getting organized. I don't know why I just, um, my, there was some stuff that came from my grandma's home um, last week and I cleaned out some things. I'm not bringing anything into the home without taking stuff out. So, um, the idea is to get it down to what I really need and what I don't need. And that way I don't have to clean so much. I'm liking it. Um, it's not a New Year's resolution. It's not anything. Um, I've always done that. And I have a six-month rule here in our house. If it's not used in six months, it needs to go. With the exception of our coveralls. Coveralls stay no matter what. Just saying. Um, so, uh, I got together all the things that my granny and I had been working on before she passed away. Um, and that included a lot of ceramics. So here's a clip of, I guess you'd call it my New Year's resolution. It's just a goal and I will have it done. I don't care if I have to push between Thanksgiving and Christmas. I will have this done. But anyway, here's that clip to let you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is my ceramic shelf or two. I have two pieces that I've already finished. Now, these are for my daughter. Um, and in all fairness, they were already started. I just finished them off. Um, the one needed antiquing, the other one just needed the tips and the antiquing. So, um, yeah, those two are done. And for her, I have a My Little Pony that still has to be done. Then, um, I have some things that are for RJ. There's a cow cup. This is a statue. This is a cow that he wants painted like Longhorn. There is another cow back there that is supposed to be his. He's like, I don't know why I had two mom. I said, I don't know, maybe it's a, a mom and a baby. But anyway, these three pieces right here belong to this nativity. Okay, this is also RJ's. I don't know why he liked it. He just did so. Um, and this is RJ's. Uh, these were purchased a long time ago. Um, <laughs> these, this one right here, I think has a marking of 2000 so it is 17 years old um, as with a lot of these these two are going to be made to match two I have upstairs and they will be for Christmas only then the other things that are for the kids are actually going to be their Christmas presents this year get them out of my house and then the rest of it the uh, nativity scene is actually going to stay out all year long so um, the there's a donkey, a cow, baby Jesus, which I just love because it's got the sheep and a little bird. And I don't know why, I just love it. It's going to be a lot of work to do. But um, then it's got the two camels. It's got Joseph, Mary, and this is my favorite piece out of the whole thing. And it's a shepherd. And he's got a lamb around it. But look at the lamb at his feet. It looks long-haired. I have no idea why, but it just does. So, anyway, 
I just really like them. <laughs> Does that make sense? I like the shepherd. Um, and then, let me set that there. Then I have the three kings. I've got, or yeah, right here, right here, right there. So it's 11 pieces. Um, I'm okay with that. I really am. It's amazing. I'm going to get it done, get it all put together. Uh, RJ wants it to be really detailed. I want to do it with bright, bold colors, reds, purples, golds, um, that kind of stuff. So we'll see how it turns out. Anyway, this is made to look like bidet. Uh, I think that's it for the ceramic shelf. So hopefully you'll get to see one piece a week done. The plan is one a week. If I get more than that done a week, I will be ecstatic. Okay, so that is my goal. Um, I refuse to call it a New Year's resolution because I'm just going to get stuff done. I've been working on it. Um, I just finally gathered it all up and decided I'm going to get all of it done. Um, anyway, let's see what else been going on on the farm. Mm. I do have one thing to show you. I almost forgot. We put bamboo buttons on the poncho that Granny knit. So I really like them. I think they look really natural. Um, I just like it. So it's, I, I've decided I'm not going to buy a diet, but what I am going to do is the fire festival that I teach at, I actually teach Tunisian and every year I pack a class. Uh, next year, I'm going to announce at this year's class that next year I will be teaching Tunisian in the round. Hmm. So that'll be interesting. Um, I'm going to ask that I'm actually going to teach it as two classes. I'll teach beginner class and then the experience class. You must have um, crochet knowledge in order to do the Tunisian in the round. So I will offer that class as well. Uh, anything else? I don't think so. <laughs> um, I think that about brings it to the end. I'm going to uh, get back to spinning. I've got, I want to do about 350 more yards of um, In the Grace, the Shetland. Uh, oh, and while I was on a break here, I went and got the Shetland, and there it is all washed up, and I love it. It is super, super soft. Even when it's wet, it's super soft. I love it. So, anyway, there is the, oops, trying to, try to put over to the drying rack past the spinning wheel. Anyway, so, uh. I will be taking down some Christmas decorations today and just kind of getting the house back in order and spinning the in the grease and I think that is about it just waiting on the yarn to dry for fiber festival so I can label it but I we don't leave until Friday so next weekend our podcast I'm gonna try and do Facebook live for a few minutes or um, I've never done YouTube live um, other than in the barn and I don't know if I can do it on my phone so I'm gonna try we might test here and there and between now and next week and we'll see other than that Tuesday we've got the gardening class coming up Julianne is coming to talk to um, the gardening class about hotbeds um, I think that's it that's really all we have going on a lot of fiber stuff getting reorganized and I'm going to clear out the craft stuff this year um, I haven't been doing much beading I'll save the minimal beading stuff and then maybe donate to a church uh, I don't know if you're willing to pay shipping and handling and you see something in video you want let me know uh, and I'll post some things you know post it on here this has got to go this has got to go this has got to go um, 
and we'll go from there. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to get off of here and get some things done, and I will talk to y'all next week. And we hope that you'll join us again. Like, subscribe, all those fancy things. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. I'd say Instagram and Twitter, but you can't. <laughs> talk to y'all next time. Bye.